This lesson is about playing over the chord changes in a 12 bar blues. And we're gonna get some reps in by looking at the five chord, four chord, and one chord section that comes at the end of a typical 12 bar blues. And we're gonna have a look at three different ways that you can approach playing lead guitar over these chord changes. Premium members have access to additional lesson materials like downloadable tabs and the Sound Slice interactive tab player for this lesson. Plus, we're gonna have a special extended cut of this lesson live where we're gonna go into the licks a little bit deeper, how they work and how you can change them to make them your own. That's for members only. So if you're a member, check out the details on the community calendar and I hope to see you there. But now let's dig into today's lesson. For the first way of playing through the chord changes, I want you to find your home scale. So the scale that matches the key that you're working in and just work entirely within that scale. I think this is a fantastic way to get started jamming the blues. Our chords that we're gonna play over are in the key of C minor. So you'll hear a C minor, and then you're going to hear our five chord, which is G minor seven in this case, and then down to an F minor seven, right? And then back to C. Again, we're drilling a super specific part of a 12 bar blues here just to help you play through the changes in rapid succession, right? To just get some drilling of this idea down. So we're gonna hear this by starting with the five chord actually for measure, down to the four chord for measure, and then down to the one chord for two measures. So now what's our scale? Well, we could certainly get going with the C minor pentatonic scale, right? And play that up the fretboard as well. But what I'm gonna to choose to do here is to add just a little bit of that spicy blue note. So we're actually going to play the C minor blues scale. And we're going to stick within this set of notes, those notes that I just played while we move from the five chord down to the four chord and then down to the one chord. I'm just gonna play over a little loop. Let's get that going. All right, there's the five chord, the four chord, the one chord, another measure of one. And here we go. So you can tell that we stayed within those notes that I just laid out for us, which is solidly within the C minor blues scale. This note right here, making it the blues scale, that flat five note. And we stayed within the scale. And the licks that I'm playing aren't nearly as important to me in this lesson as just demonstrating that you can and should start jamming the blues just by staying in one scale. I think that simplifies things. And there's a lot of goodness right here in the minor pentatonic scale or even stepping out into that blues. That blues scale. The next way of thinking about playing through the changes in a blues is going to be matching the, in this case, minor pentatonic scale of the chord that is being played. So if we're playing the G minor seven chord, we're gonna play notes from the G minor pentatonic scale there. And when the chord changes down to F minor seven, we're going to play notes from the F minor uh, pentatonic scale. Then, of course, we're going back to the one chord and we're going to slip back into C minor pentatonic. So let's have a listen at what that sounds like. There's our five chord, the four chord, the one chord, and then here's some licks. So what we did here was actually a, a really good way to slip into this playing the changes idea. When we got to the G chord, which was our five chord, I'm thinking about this as the G that's gonna kind of ground me. And from here, I can play a little tiny minor pentatonic shape, right? It's not the full scale, but here's my G. I can reach up to the flat third of the scale. If you know your scale, then this part will be easy to you. And then up to the 
C, and then D. Again, not the full scale, but enough for me to use right here. And what I did was bring in this F note, right? We can also go lower than this, than this G, right? Again, if you mapped out your scale here, you would see that all of these are within the G minor pentatonic, and that's what I'm thinking about here. And the cool thing is you can set up a quick little phrase, whatever it is, and then when the chord changes down from the five to the four, you can do the exact same thing, just down two frets. And it's going to work, it's gonna sound good, right? We're playing over this chord. And then we move down from G to F, and let's do the same thing and just kind of move it down a whole step, move it down two frets and the same exact lick will work and you're playing with the changes here. And then of course we can come back into our home base here, whether it's the C minor or, or the C blues. I highly recommend if you're new to this, definitely start out just by jamming over one single scale and working over the chord changes and then growing into what we just did, which is taking a lick and putting it into the five chord, right? Taking it into that key. So we're leaving C minor and going into, in this case, G minor, and then play the same exact thing down to frets. It's a really cool sound, but it can sound a little bit like brute force playing with the changes, right? What we're gonna do next is to take that and level up. We're still going to focus on matching the minor pentatonic scale of the chord that's being played, but we're gonna do it without moving positions. So this really makes you focus on finding the minor pentatonic scale notes of the chord that's being played. You're not gonna be able to just move down the fretboard with one position, like taking the down two frets. I want to stay in position here and play something from that particular chord's minor pentatonic scale. Here's an example of that in action. There's our five chord, four, and then one. So here we go, staying in position. So I started out focusing on the G minor scale from this spot. We already have established that it lives right here within the same, what we would think of as a big C minor pentatonic scale, pattern one if you're familiar with the box patterns. But what we did is play from G minor pentatonic by working in this note here, the D, right? From C minor, we skip right over that. So if I want to bring out the fact that I'm playing over a G minor chord, G minor seven chord, I really want to hit that D note. That is a differentiator and it puts us more in to thinking about the chord G7, all right? In our case, G minor seven. And then what I'm going to do is bend this note up. But the sneaky thing that happens here that really, to me, helps to express what I'm getting after here is when I release this bend, I'm going to come down to the ninth fret. Now check this out. That ninth fret on the second string, not in the C minor pentatonic scale. We skip right over it, right? And also not in the G minor pentatonic scale. We start here on the 10th if we're playing G minor and we move up to the 11th on the second string. So that ninth is really putting us in the F minor pentatonic sound. That's the minor third of F. There's our F, there's the minor third of it, right? So when I release and come down to that, it sounds really sweet, at least to my ears. And I think that's one way that you can play more through the changes, play with the chord changes that are happening is to highlight a tone that is really not common to all of the pentatonic scales, but highlight a chord tone, right? Highlight a tone that really brings out the flavor of the chord that's being played. And we did that here. We played the minor third of F. There's F, there's the minor third of the F. And that note, 
really helps to let everybody know that we're playing through the chord changes with intent. And then from there, we finish up with some loops and get more into C minor pentatonic to wrap up the jam. If you learned something from this lesson, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Sure helps me out a lot, keeps these lessons coming out each and every week. And if you wanna go deeper, grab the additional lesson materials like the tabs and the Sound Slice Interactive Tab Player, then definitely join BGI at the link right over here. And I hope to see you inside my BGI. Until then, practice smart and play on.